Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to challenge you, I'm going to challenge you to really learn to release the golf club. And we're going to do that for a particular reason. Because when we release the golf club correctly, we hit the golf ball better. Strange one that, isn't it? The fact is though, you're probably not releasing the golf club. Not that you're not releasing it at any point in time, you're either releasing it too early or releasing it too late apparently, but what you are trying to do is consciously control the release. Delaying it, speeding it up, but you shouldn't be doing this. You've got to allow the release to happen naturally. Now if you're not sure what a release is, it's all about basically releasing angles that you build in the backswing and at the start of your downswing. Angles primarily in your trail elbow, your trail wrist, and your lead wrist. What's actually happening with these is the trail elbow and wrist are bending and rotating. And the same thing is happening with the lower arm and wrist, but the lead wrist is staying fairly straight. So we've got a number of things going on. This is what we call ulnar and radial deviation. This is rotation. And this is flexion and extension. When we do this, what we're actually doing is we are hinging and releasing. And the hinging and releasing allows the sole to interact with the ground. If I hinge and hold, I'm not going to get back down to the ball. So I'm going to have to do something with the rest of my body to get there. It's also going to mean I'm going to have more interaction between the leading edge of the club and the ground, which is something that you really don't want. At the same time, if I start releasing the club too early, then obviously I'm going to be spooning it and there'll be more interaction between the back of the golf club and the ground, which could lift the leading edge off the ground and cause me to top the ball slightly. But how in the world are you ever going to understand and control these things? Well, the first thing is simply to think of the mechanics here. If I were to hold the golf club ever so lightly and then move the grip end in that direction, then you can actually see that it there's a delay between when the hand moves over and when the head moves over. And this is caused by inertia, which is simply the weight of the club saying, I'm not going with you. Oh, yes, I am. By keeping the connection between my fingers and the club soft, the club can release of its own free will. And it will release of its own free will as soon as I stop moving the club grip away from the club head. Indirectly, when you're swinging a golf club, this is all that's happening. When you take the club back, you hinge your trail arm and wrist, your lead arm and wrist, and then you start to move forward. And the rotation of your body, the rotation of your shoulders, will pull the arms with it. The arms will pull the grip with it, and the head, at least for a short amount of time, will say, no, nah, I'm not going with you. And this will give you a last increase in these hinge positions. It will change a little bit of the lie or the plane of the golf club as well. And these angles have to be released. But you're not going to release them by holding them to a particular point and then relaxing your arms. You're going to keep your arms relaxed throughout. If you aren't relaxed, then the club's inertia won't be enough to hinge your wrists and elbows any further. And as you get to the point where your hips and shoulders and therefore your arms and hands slow down, the club won't be allowed to overtake. Getting the feeling of the club being able to release when it wants shows the true nature of your golf swing. And in the majority of cases, you are fighting that true nature. Why? Because you don't think it will work. So what I want you to do now is try this, this drill just with a short shot. 
I've got a lob wedge here in my hand and I'm simply going to take it back to a roundabout kind of hip height. Then I'm going to change direction, but I'm going to keep my arms and hands soft. And you can see what a lovely gentle little shot that is. Now I'm not trying to control the distance the ball is going. You can see that that ball flown far too far for the target, which is why I normally wouldn't have allowed my hands to release that way. But by blocking them, I could make the result even worse. On the contrary, what I've got to do is I have to reduce the amount of speed that the club would naturally have by taking the club back a shorter distance, but still allowing it to release. And suddenly, I have a true release. I have a true head speed. I'm not manipulating the head speed. I'm simply allowing it to happen. When I take the club just a short distance back and move forward, I have the same phenomenon that the grip end will move forward before the head end does, and then the head end will catch up. And because I'm not trying to stop it catching up, I'm allowing it to catch up. The, the combination of the forces working on the club head and the deceleration of my body, because my body isn't rotating a great deal in this movement, is allowing the club to simply come down and go through the ball. It just takes a bit of confidence. And that's why this is something you have to practice on a regular basis. And then you have to introduce the same principles into your full swing, and especially your driver. If you are not driving the ball well, it's because you're gripping the thing too tightly. You are not allowing the golf club to swing, and you have to let it swing. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, but Jonathan, I don't turn enough, and I flip the wrists. Well, then you flip the wrists. And if you flip the wrist too early, you will re reach the ground with the club head, maybe even overtaking your hands. However, if you allow that to happen, you will hit the ball at least as well as your swing can hit the ball. Blocking it is not better. And if you take a tip out of my last video and get an address position with a little bit more ulnar deviation in the address position with your lead wrist bent down a little bit further, then you will actually get away from any chance of you really digging into the ground through an early release. All the early release is doing is causing you to spoon the ball a bit, which means you're adding loft and maybe getting, not getting the uh, energy transfer that you would like. But again, it's because you aren't turning your hips, you aren't turning your shoulders, you're not driving your arms and hands forward for long enough in order to keep inertia on the club and stop it catching up with you. But the answer is not to block the wrists and stop the club catching up with you at all, because that is what's changing face angle, that is what's causing a poor strike on the golf ball, and that's what's losing you golf balls more than anything else that you're doing. Learning to release the golf club correctly could be your salvation of even if it doesn't look too pretty on camera. I hope you like this video. I hope you go out there and give it a go. You might be surprised by the results. If you did like it, then please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. If you'd really like to support the channel, you could become a patron. And a big thanks to all of the patrons out there who do support the channel on a regular basis. I'll leave a link to, bo below to that as well. We'll see you next Sunday with the next one. Until then, look after yourself.